Great to welcome back onto the network, the former NFL head coach with Washington in Jay Gruden, who joins us right now talking a little bit of NFL as we get ready for the start of the 2023 season. Uh, first off, Coach, great to, first off to have you back on the network. Uh, the fact that we've had you on for the first time since Daniel Snyder sells the team in Washington. How liberating must that city feel right now from someone like you who spent so many years there? I think they just got done partying a couple days ago. So <laughs> I know everybody is excited about a new regime coming in and uh, what the future will bring for the Washington Commanders. When you look or at whoever the, they're going to be, I don't know. <laughs> right, right, exactly, yeah. yeah. Coach, let's stay on that theme for a second there. When you look at this team, I love the talent at wide receiver with Terry McLaurin, uh, Jahan Dotson, and, of course, Curtis Samuel as well. Now you've got a young quarterback there in Sam Howe. From your perspective, you've been around good, great quarterbacks. You've been around some quarterbacks maybe not as good. What do you see and how do you evaluate him fitting in in Washington? Well, I still think their recipe is going to be playing great defense and be able to run the ball. I think uh, Ryan Robinson's got to have a big year. I think Antonio Gibson's got to continue to flourish in the back out of the backfield on third down. Um, and they got to stay balanced. And then Sam Howell's got to be able to utilize his uh, athletic ability with some of the zone reads and the RPOs, to try to keep the defense off balance. If they have to become one-dimensional and throw the ball a lot, I think they're going to struggle like most young quarterbacks do. But uh, playing great defense, running the ball, playing a field position game, I think will be their recipe for success. Yeah, six and a half on the win total right now for Washington in 2023, juiced under at minus 120. Speaking of another team, Jay, that was also at a six and a half win total. It's a team you worked for as a consultant last year. The LA Rams and head coach Sean McVay was just asked today about that win total. Now the you know, sports betting more in the in the mainstream, and he said uh, his quote was, "Whatever I say, I'm going to get in trouble right now. They don't believe in us. Uh, how much do you believe in the Rams having a bounce back in 2023 after the the all the injuries that they had to play through a season ago?" Yeah, I've, I've been through that where you have a lot of injuries and you don't win as many games you'd like to with your star players playing. But when you add Matthew Stafford back to the mix healthy and you add Cooper Cup healthy, uh, they made some changes at receiver. I think uh, the receiving core will be a little bit better. Um, their offensive line should be a little bit better. With you know they got haven't seen coming back and they got Brian Allen coming back and No Boom coming back. So uh, those guys will be okay. And they drafted a guard I think out of TCU Avila, so he'll he'll help a little bit. Uh, defensively, where I'm a little bit concerned, losing Jalen Ramsey, I think will hurt. Um, uh, and then I, I just see how they have to step up. Aaron Donald's obviously a great player, but I just don't know if they have the the, 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 the guys on defense to really get a lot of stops that they need. Coach, I want to go a little bit off topic here. You mentioned a uh, draft pick out of TCU. When you were a head coach, how much input do you as a head coach or your position coaches have in the involvement of drafting players? Because obviously you're paying attention to what you guys are doing on the field. But then at the same time, you need the pieces that are going to work for you and what you want to do. Yeah, it's a process. I think it's a great communication uh, issue. Scouts, uh, if you have a GM, uh, he's got to communicate well with the coaches and get everybody's opinion. Then you make your uh, picks based on what the position coach's grade is, the coordinator's grade, the head coach's grade, the scouts who didn't scout the player's grade, the head scout, the GM, whoever it is. You try to get all the information necessary. Uh, the background on the guy, and then you rate them, uh, put them in the draft order that you think they're going to go in, and and then make your picks. You know, and hopefully you do enough work where uh, you make good, solid picks, and everybody's on the same page. You know, it's when you get in troubles when somebody comes from outside and they make the picks for you, they didn't even watch the film. That's where you get problems. But mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, uh, the process should be good with all organizations. Not everybody's going to agree on every pick. That's a tough thing. Uh, but when they do make the pick, you have to understand it's for the team and for the betterment of the franchise, and you got to go with it. We're talking with the former NFL head coach, Super Bowl champion Jay Gruden right now on Visa and Sharp Money going around the horn on the NFL. T speaking of your coaches you have worked with and just thinking about a unique situation when how you played quarterback and, and now how this will translate into 2023. It's in Green Bay where Matt LaFleur now gets Jordan Love as his quarterback, been in the system a couple seasons, but with moving on from Aaron Rodgers, how do you expect that transition to go with the team that is uh, among the longer shots to come out of the NFC North this year? Yeah, I think it's, Deservedly so to be a long shot. I just don't think he's ready to uh, take over the role, my my opinion. He's had a couple games where he's played, but um, this is a situation where they don't have a lot of people around. They didn't have a great receiving crew last year with a, a Hall of Fame quarterback, and they struggled on offense. Now you take away Aaron Rodgers, you put a young kid in, and uh, you got uh, you got Dobbs, you got uh, Jaden Reed, who they drafted, you got uh, Christian Watson. Uh, I don't think they're really going to scare the heck out of anybody. I think they're going to have to rely on, like I said, with – Sam Howell, A.J. Dillon, and Aaron Jones. You know, they got to get them the ball and then you utilize Jordan Love's legs in some of the zone reads. I think the same recipe that Washington has to have with Sam Howell, I think Green Bay has to have. Play great defense, play the field position, 
utilize the athleticism of your quarterback and, and obviously uh, get the running backs the ball as often as you can. Coach, you may be aware that uh, Frank Reich has already named uh, Bryce Young the starting quarterback in Carolina. From a coach's perspective, first of all, tell me why you would make that decision so early in camp. And then if you've had a chance to watch Bryce Young either at Alabama or just overall your thoughts during the scouting process on him. Well, I think when you have a young quarterback, you want to get him as many reps as possible. When I was in Cincinnati, we had Andy Dalton. We named him the starter right away. So he get every rep in OTAs, in a training camp, in the preseason, which is critical for a young player's development. you got to get them the ball off and get them to play in the huddle, practice breaking the huddle, seeing the, re- seeing the defenses, seeing the blitzes, handling protections. Uh, so it's a great move, I think, by Frank. You know, oh, they have a veteran behind him, Andy Dalton. I mean, so uh, Andy will be ready if, if Bryce fails at all. But I think uh, his talent level, uh, his ability to move around, his arm strength, his accuracy, I think warrants him a shot to start week one for uh, the Carolina Panthers. Now, speaking of young quarterbacks, this is a guy who has played last year, not a true rookie, but it seems, Jay, like there are two schools of thought on the San Francisco 49ers. It's either hey, you can't be a legitimate Super Bowl contender with a guy as inexperienced as Brock Purdy as quarterback, or just look at the rest of the roster. That's a, that's a group that should be right there, no matter who is under center. Uh, how do you imagine that from Kyle Shanahan's perspective, he's going to approach this year, and what do you expect from the Niners as far as their expectations as one of the short shots out of the NFC? Yeah, I think they have to make a, a stand and, and make themselves a starting quarterback and get it announced. You know, they got Trey Lance and Sam Darnold and Brock Purdy. If you start splitting reps three ways, nobody's going to get enough reps to be as effective as they would be as if you name a starter. So if they name Purdy, great. Uh, continue to utilize Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, obviously. Uh, run left. Run left as often as you can behind Trent Williams. How we let him get out of Washington, I have no idea. <laughs> the best tackle I've ever seen or been around. Um, but I, I am concerned a little bit about the other part of the linemen that they lost in free agency. And, uh, but they still have great weapons in Iuke and, and Debo Samuel and obviously Christian McCaffrey and Kittle. So there will be a fun team to watch and very competitive to go along with a very excellent defense, assuming Nick Bosa comes into camp. You mentioned Bosa. Obviously, he, he's a potential holdout there. But Hargrave comes over from Philadelphia. Quantify the loss for Philadelphia's defensive front and the addition for San Francisco and how beneficial it could potentially be. Well, I think anytime you get pressure up the middle, it's, it's beneficial to go along with the edge rushers that they have already in house in San Francisco. So they can get you a lot of different ways. Uh, they can blitz you. They can rush four. They can rush three and still get home with the talent that they have. So they can play coverage. They can play single high. They got the corners to play man. So defensively, I think it'll be fun uh, for the new defensive quarter that they, that they have um, because they have such great players. Sticking in the NFC, uh, one more team I wanted to throw at you, Jay, since you've worked with Kevin O'Connell, you know very intimately the strengths of Kirk Cousins as a quarterback. A lot of people talking about Minnesota like they're a five-win team after they had all the one-score wins from a season ago. How do you imagine that the carryover from year one to year two goes for Kevin O'Connell as a head man there in the Twin Cities? I think the first year Kevin did a great job. They won a lot of close games. Uh, They got the ball bounced their way quite a bit, and uh, I think they gave up more points than they scored despite winning 10 or 11 games. So um, they're going to have to do a little bit better job on defense. They've made a change on defensive coordinator. They're going to be more aggressive. Um, they're going to blitz a lot more, which are going to put their corners in a bind from time to time. And I don't know if, you know, Evans and Murphy and uh, Bynum and all these guys can hold up and the, the rookie Blackman can hold up doing that. Um, so I think Minnesota's got to score a lot of points. And Kirk's equipped to do that with the weapons that they have. You know, hopefully the running back uh, without Dalvin Cook, uh, Madison will do okay. But Justin Jefferson will still get his share of touches and, K.J. Osborne will still do good, and that offense, I think, will be pretty explosive. Coach, one final one for you. The Denver Broncos bring in Sean Payton, tremendous head coach, but Russell Wilson, some question marks surrounding can he still play. From your assessment, how good can he be, and what could this Denver team be this year? Well, my big concern is they brought in Nate Hackett last year, who coached Aaron Rodgers and has a pretty decent system. I mean, he got another offensive coordinator job with the Jets back with Aaron Rodgers, and and they were abysmal on offense. I mean, it's not like the plays were all terrible, I wouldn't think. I mean, some of the plays had to be sound. Uh, Just Russell didn't perform very good. And I know some of the coaching decisions with clock management are one thing, but uh, his statistics and his ability to move the ball and throw the ball accurately and on time, I think, is in question. And I know that uh, Sean Payton has a great system. Um, They have very sound offensive plays, but so does Nathaniel Hackett, and they just didn't work. Uh, they have a decent receiving core, Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy, obviously, and Tim Patrick. But uh, they got to get the running game going, and, and Russell's not a spring chicken anymore, so his mobility's not quite what it used to be when he was at Seattle, and I think that's a major concern. 
Now, no doubt on that as we get ready for the start of the 2023 season. We can't thank you enough, Jay, for the insights. Jay Gruden, former NFL head coach and Super Bowl champion, joining us right now on Sharp Money. Jay, thank you so much. I appreciate the time as always. You got it. Thank you guys for having me. Go to vsun.com slash subscribe to become a VEASAN Pro subscriber today.